What's going on guys and welcome to Who to Sign For. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in a career mode. But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. You don't have to follow all the tips, this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you can sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game and just want some help or for those of you out there who may just be stuck for ideas on what players you can buy for a specific team in career mode. So in today's who to sign for guys, we are going to take a look at the German side Borussia Dortmund. Of course, Dortmund used to have the manager Jurgen Klopp before he moved to Liverpool this season after leaving Dortmund at the end of last season. Now under the management of Thomas Tuchel, but if you were going to take over instead of Borussia Dortmund, what would the board want you to do? They'd want you to win the league, reach the quarterfinal of the cup and also win the Europa League as well. So Borussia Dortmund not in the Champions League this season, in the Europa League instead. The board want you to win that win the league title as well, so a league and European double, and also reach the quarterfinals of the Deutsche Pokal. Don't think I pronounced that right, so I'll just say German Cup. So, can you do that with this uh, with this Borussia Dortmund side? Well, it's going to be difficult, I'll just say that. Borussia Dortmund, of course, have got a pretty decent side, despite struggling last season. Have got a pretty decent side, some headline players in there, such as Marco Reus on Aubameyang, of course, worth looking out for. But the side in general, I would say, is not up to the scratch of Bayern Munich's uh, current ability. So, to be be able to win the league title with Borussia Dortmund in the first season is going to be a really difficult challenge. It is possible. It's not impossible and therefore it's possible, but it is going to be difficult. Uh, still, you can see the contracts there. Uh, free half there's running out at the end of the season. The headline one is Weidenfeld. You can give him one if you want, but I'll discuss that in just a moment's time. And uh, also as well, two players currently out on loan from Borussia Dortmund right now that I'd recommend recalling straight away. Those are the Polish right midfielder Blasikowski and also Shiro Immobile, the Italian striker. Uh, Blasikowski is at Fiorentina and Immobile is currently Severe. I would just recall them both. Blazikowski, of course, because he's towards the... Um I actually think he is 30 in the game, or he might be 29, but he's, he's coming towards his 30s anyway if he's not already 30. And as for Immobile, he's 25 years old. The, the point of loaning out players, in my eyes, is, is to always try and develop youngsters who aren't good enough for your first team yet. Those two are good enough, so I just recall them straight away. But uh, for transfers to sign, uh, transfer to sign, for players to sign with Borussia Dortmund, what we all look forward to in this series, because it's called Who to Sign For. Well, the two players I would recommend are these guys right here, Serge Aurier and also Jose Gaia. So fullbacks, so right back in a left back as well. Now, I know you're probably thinking, surely you wouldn't want to replace Marcel Schmelzer, right? He's been at Borussia Dortmund for his entire career. Well, I would because, you know, even though Borussia Dortmund fans would, would, would hate me for doing this if I was to become their manager, Schmelzer is a 78 overall player and his potential is 79. And if you were to buy Jose Gaia who would come in, he would already be good enough to replace Schmelzer and he's also eight years younger as well. Now, Jose Gaia's potential is 87. He starts off as an 80. Of course, I've used him in the game before. He's very, very good. And uh, to be honest, I, I think he would be a really good replacement for Schmelzer. And as for Serge Aurier, Piszczek is uh, 30 years old. He's set to decrease in the first few seasons. I'd replace him straight away. And I think Serge Aurier would be a great replacement. They start off at the same overall, which is 80. And Aurier's potential is 85 as well. So in my eyes, the best place to look for Richie Dortmund is improving the fullbacks. And as you can see, we managed to get Serge Aurier for a deal of £7.5 million pounds plus Piszczek. Uh, the reason I would do that is swap uh, Piszczek out and also, as you can see what we're doing with Valencia, uh, you swap out Schmelzer as well, it's just because once you have Serge Aurier and Jose Gaia in your team, Schmelzer and Piszczek will drop to the bench in the resis, and they're both on a pretty decent contract, uh, Schmelzer's on 60 grand a week, I think it is, and Piszczek, I do believe, is on 70 or 80 grand a week, which quite frankly, is a lot to be paying for a backup fullback who is coming towards the later years in their career, you know, they're not in their early 20s anymore, Schmelzer is 28, turns 29 during the season, Piszczek is 30, so that's what I'd be looking to do there. Also, Blazikowski as well, who we recalled. I'd recommend selling him straight away if you can. We got a deal of £14 million agreed with Stoke City, which to me is good business sense. It may cost you around £800,000 to recall him, but to get £14 million for him immediately afterwards, in my eyes, is just good business. So I'd recommend selling Blazikowski once you've got him. You would have seen as well as Jose Gaia did come in here for uh, £9 million plus Schmelzer, which is quite expensive, but I think it is worth it as uh, Gaia does grow to an 87, one of the best left backs on the game in years to come. You also would have seen as well 
I was trying to sell Roman Weidenfeller. Now, I know, again, Borussia Dortmund fans would hate me for this. Uh, Weidenfeller, of course, a club legend, really. Uh, Weidenfeller, though, is in the final year of his contract, and he wants a wage increase as well, and he's set to go down in the first season. So, for me, I would actually look to sell Weidenfeller, even though he won't want to leave the club. But that's one of those things that you don't have to do if you don't want to. I totally get that. It, it's like when I did my Everton who to sign for the last time out. You know, I was talking about Tony Hibbert and Leon Osman as players, who you're not going to have much use for. So, maybe it's best letting their contracts run down. Weidenfeller's the same. Either sell him or let his contract run down. The fact of the matter is, he's not good enough for your first team now that you've got Berkey, who uh, grows to an 84 and starts off one rating higher than Weidenfeller at 80. So, for me, you know, I, I know that Borussia Dortmund fans would absolutely hate me for this, but I think that getting rid of Schmelzer and bringing in Gaia is a good uh, piece of business right there. And also for Weidenfeller, if you could sell him, we couldn't do it because he wouldn't want to leave, which is fine. Uh, let his contract run down because you're probably not going to give him a new one or look to get as much money for him as possible. But uh, still, another player I recommend signing is this guy right here, Kevin Volland of Hoffenheim. Once you sold Blasikowski for around £14 million, pounds, you can pick up this guy for close to his valuation. He's seven years younger at 23 years old. He's a physical beast. His stats are really good. He's got strength, stamina and pace as well. Really good player. We go for £13.5 million. Pounds. He starts off at 80, can reach 85. So it's the same as Blasikowski. You get him for less than what you pay, uh, what you uh, what you got for uh, Blasikowski. And uh, he's a really decent, talented young right midfielder. Can also play striker as well. So Kevin Volland for me would be a good signing if you could bring him into Borussia Dortmund. And you can see the theme with Borussia Dortmund right here is all about the transition of getting rid of the older players and bringing in younger replacements. Another good one here is Nicholas Sewell. We managed to agree, agree a deal with Hoffenheim for £1 million pounds, uh, pounds plus Subotic. And again, you're probably sitting there thinking, seriously, you get rid of Subotic and just swap him to a club, not even sell him? Well, for me, I would say that Subotic is one of those players who is a, a decent squad player for Borussia Dortmund now, 79 overall. He's been steadily going down in the past few FIFAs. Uh, his, uh, his ratings actually weren't too bad, but now he's a 79 centre-back. Uh, he's behind Socrates, he's behind Hummels, and his potential is only 80, so he'll only grow by one rating, and of course he's 26 years old as well. So Subotic for me, I'll just recommend get rid of the guy and bring in a younger replacement. Nicholas Sewell, who we agreed a deal with Hoffenheim for £1 million plus Subotic, is a good deal in my eyes, because even though Subotic is one rating higher, and you could probably sell him for a few million pounds, he's, uh, he's, he's seven years older at 26, uh, uh, Sewell is only 19, and of course he's only one rating higher as well. Subotic's potential is 80, so only grows by one. And as for Sewell, he gets up to an 86 in games. Would be a really good long-term replacement for the likes of Hummels and Socrates, who are the current centre-back partnership in this Borussia Dortmund side. So £1 million pounds plus Subotic, as you can see right here, that's what we agreed. You know, it may not sound like a good deal to some people, but for me, the theme for Borussia Dortmund should be about replacing the players who aren't good enough anymore with younger players that will either be good enough straight away or will be really good in a few years time Sewell definitely matches the objective of the latter there he will be a monster in a few years time he's six foot five I think he's a great uh, like for like replacement with Subotic as well he's a really decent young defender one of the best you can buy in the game and a girl with 86 potential as well he'll grow eight ratings with a training feature and also uh, good form as well in game time he could outgrow that too he could be a monster in many years to come so I'd replace Subotic with uh, Sewell and also as well once you've done that you'd have around 11 million pounds to work with around that I would say uh, you could probably bring in one more decent player as a squad player but I would recommend actually buying some young German talent once you've done that. Three players that stand out for me are Julian Brand, Leroy Sane and also Timo Werner as well. Uh, these players come from Bayer Leverkusen, Schalke and Stuttgart. Now these are three really good teenage German talents. Uh, Sane's potential is 87, Brandt's is 88 and Werner's is 84. Now as you can see we got a deal accepted with Stuttgart of £3 million to Timo Werner. I should say £3.3 million to Timo Timo Werner, which is valuation, which in my opinion is a really good deal for a 19-year-old that has 11 uh, for a growth rating. Sane, though, we had to pay a little bit more over the odds. You can see we put in a £5.5 .5 million deal after the first one was rejected. Same with Bayer Leverkusen here for Julian Brandt. I offered £6 million plus a random American right midfielder that uh, Dortmund have that uh, isn't very good on the game, and we'd wait and see what they say. And as you can see, the second time, lucky, they did accept those bids, and uh, Schalke and Bayer Leverkusen were okay with the bids we put in there. Uh, although I will say here, as you can see there, 
uh, chief executive comes to us and says that uh, uh, I think it's uh, Werner was in talks with other clubs as well. Um, these players are wanted by other clubs in the game, so you may have to wrap up these deals as soon as possible. So it's best not to uh, sort of dilly dally with this. Just try and get it done as soon as possible to make sure you don't miss out and watch them leave to another club because these are really good young talents as well. I mean, Brandt's growth rating is 14, uh, Werner's is 11, of course, Sane's is 12 as well. For good young German talent, you're not going to get much better than these three guys right here. They'd all be really good squad players for you. And again, the theme with Borussia Dortmund is about bringing in younger players to replace older ones in the squad. These three players right here will be fantastic signings for you as wide midfielders and strikers as well. So Timo Werner came in for £3.3 million pounds on a 30 grand a week salary. But sadly, I didn't really play this very well and I didn't realise I wouldn't have much money, uh, sorry, enough money, sorry, to sign both Sane and Julian Brandt. So you may be doing, you know, more shrewd business than I did during this, uh, this uh, Borussia Dortmund career mode that you're doing and you might be able to sign all three of them. I could only choose two of the three. So it was a little bit sad. I could only choose two of these three German talents. One had to miss out. I decided to leave Sane behind instead. Uh, but you could just choose whichever ones you wanted if you could only sign one or two of those three players. So Sane got left behind because, of course, I thought to myself, Jan is here on a one-year loan deal. I won't need him in the first season. You might be able to get him next season instead. So Julian Brandt came in, Timo Werner came in, and either way, those are two good signings in my opinion. Uh, really, really good young German talents right there. Again, 74 and 73 overall, respectively. Both still teenagers. Werner's growth is 11, hits 84, and of course, uh, Brandt as well would hit 88 in game, which is just staggering. So you spend around £41 million on all these players and receive about £22 million for the players you would sell. Blasi Koski going, of course, a 40 million pounds really does help and again if you could sell Ramos too he went to Newcastle right at the start of this I'd definitely recommend it because Ramos for me is nothing better than a squad player he's only got two years in his contract he's on a pretty bloated salary to begin with for a player who you're not going to use that much especially if you decide to recall Immobile which I would recommend because Immobile starts off 79 and has the potential to hit 82 in the game as well so for me sell Ramos bring back Immobile that to me makes perfect sense and then buy a younger striker like Timo Werner who has potential to get to 84 so you're left with this squad after all of this and the squad again as you can see is undergoing a transition here with Dortmund but what you're doing is you're youngering youngering you're making the squad younger in terms of the average age you're bringing in players with decent potential as well all of these players the minimum potential is uh, 84 that's the lowest with Timo Werner and 84 is a really good rating so when 84 is the lowest potential of the players you buy you know you're buying some really talented youngsters so that's what I would recommend doing with Dortmund replace the older players bring in the younger players and this way you are setting up your Borussia Dortmund side not for the first season, but for many years to come. So those are my recommendations for who to sign for a Borussia Dortmund career mode. And as per usual, we simulate to the end of the season to see how my team would do with the signings I would make. Sadly though, I'll be honest, I didn't do very well with this one. In the league, we finished in third place. Uh, only two points behind Schalke in second and five points behind Bayern Munich, who won the title. In the Deutsche Pokal, we did reach the quarterfinal stage for Bayern Munich, not sat by four goals to one. And uh, in the Europa League as well, we didn't win that either. But we did reach the final before Napoli beat us by a goal to nil. So I failed with the European objective. I failed with the league objective. I did match the cup objective though. So there's that. And um, yeah, I, I didn't do too well with this simulation. But uh, to be honest, I still believe that the signings aren't too bad. And I'll be honest here, you know, the aspirations that the board set in the first season of a Borussia Dortmund career mode are very, very high. I mean, right now, the current manager just came in. It's his first season in charge. And I just don't believe that realistically the board would demand that they win the league title considering Bayern's uh, strong team and also win the Europa League in the first season I just I think that's a little bit too much to ask for but to reach the final and to only be five points behind the eventual winners in the league and also match the cover objective I don't think I did terrible you know you guys may disagree you guys may disagree with that but I didn't think I didn't think I did a terrible job at all uh, I just felt as though the objectives were quite hard and I sadly did indeed fall short it was still enough for me to be kept in uh, my place though I wouldn't be replaced for the next season as you can see uh, right here they would have kept me on for a new season but uh, either way I did fail the objectives and I do want to point that out that this one probably wasn't my best one but I still felt the signings weren't too bad but either way guys those are the signings I would make for a Borussia Dortmund career mode thank you very much for watching don't forget to let me know in the comment section down below how you would manage Borussia Dortmund in their first season and I also as well recommend me my next team for the who to sign for series but thank you for watching regardless I am sorry that I failed the objectives on this one for two out of the three but either way I tried my best just clearly wasn't good enough but thank you for watching regardless please leave a like if you enjoyed the video don't forget to let me know who, what team you want me to do next and I'll see you for the next episode in my Who to Sign For series very soon.